Good morning, everyone. Today, I am going to be going into a little more detail about, detail about Pirate Demon Hunter, my list. You can see it on the right of the screen there. I'm talking a little bit about, you know, the, the lines of play and what you're looking for and how to play out the turns of this game. So I'm only getting aggressively for one drops here and my head is horrible. This is very bad. Against Warrior, you want to get out of, come out of the gate swinging. Um, brain Sap or Brain Masseuse is good. Treasure Distributor is good. Sock Puppet Slit Spear is okay. And you want a one and you want a two drop. Ideally, you want to get the curve. You want the trio. You want a one drop pirate. You want the uh, Sigil for two. And off turn three, you want Hogan Roughhauser. Hosen Roughhauser. So you see here, he plays a defensive card. We clear it out. And our head is just very, very bad. This is like worse head you could possibly get. Um, again, like I said, against Warrior, you want to have him play reactive against everything you do so here i choose uh, this okay this is actually i wouldn't say that this is the right play the right play would have been to, to play the cliffs but as i was making the or as i was playing this particular game I was chasing a particular achievement so you know that was the second best play available to me but here turn five this is going to allow me to play the cliffs activate it and reactivate it putting on four damage onto the armor, as well as a two damage from the brain Zeus, right? And this, if the board stays alive, I will be able to play whole Zid Roughhauser with some significant damage. So my opponent wants to clear it. He's going to try to clear it, right? He has to, because uh, this represents too much problems if he wastes one turn. So he chooses for Brawl, and obviously he doesn't want to use a Brawl there, but he's forced to. And now I can play, you know, the combination of the Spirit of the Team, activate, and then play Hosen Roughhauser, right? So this will add another three damage to the board. So seven damage total, putting him at 15. Obviously, I misplayed here. I should have used that one more mana for one more additional attack on my hero power. But it's all good. He's going to look for another brawl because he has to. And now, you know, obviously that's a pretty bad brawl. But right? here we go. We get to draw some cards. We get the combo. We look at three pirates. They're all looking good. We're going to throw them out. Now we put the warrior into another turn, three straight turns, where he has to react with the board clear. But now this situation is tougher because, you know, the, the brain sat or the brain suits. Zeus and the Hosen, they're for health. So he doesn't have the clear board clear, or the, the common board clear that he wants. So he has to use Bellowing Flames. That means one minion will stay alive. Unfortunately, it's him. Or maybe fortunately, it's the Brain with Zeus. And you get the situation here. And like, it's just crazy that this is lethal. And, you know, this is why I like the Parched Desperado in the list because it gives you the necessary burst off of the hero power. And look at that. Like, we came out of... We should have lost this game, right? Like, <laughs> our start was horrible. But... Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm just really trying to get over this cold, but... Yeah, our start was horrible, but, you know... We were able to just pull it out. This deck can get aggressive really quickly. And our opponent, he had the situation to win. But he misplayed... Uh, he misplayed his removal. He should have used cheaper removal if he had it. You know, maybe he didn't have it. I'm not sure. But it put us in the situation that we're at now. So that's going to take us to our next game here. Uh, I don't remember what our opponent was in there. We're going to go through four games. It's going to be really quickly. Uh, the games are being played at one and a half times speed, so... Uh, they're, they're a lot faster than normal. I'm, I'm thinking a little longer than when I'm making the move. So we're, we're playing versus a rogue here. Okay. So a rogue is like ex, uh, excavate rogue or, or thief rogue. And here we have a gray head. We have a bunch of one drops. I could, and we're on the coin. So having two one drops when you're on the coin is good. And there is the, a reason to throw away a treasure distributor. Like that would be okay to ensure a better curve. But, I'm thinking that my opponent's going to be able to come onto the board early. And because of that, I wanted more one drops. 
So here I play a distributor plus a brain masseuse. There is an argument to be made to play two distributors. I decided for this line of play because I want to keep the distributor alive. So the brain masseuse will allow me to do that. And of course I played the, the through fell and flames to buff the treasure distributor to put it out of range of like two damage. And you know, opponent that, that start is just really, really difficult, maybe for a lot of decks to deal with. So my opponent, you know, I guess he just he didn't want to deal with it, right? So that really is just a mulligan decision and you know that that early first game turn really shaped the game because not only did i get two minions out that were like the best minions you could get we did put out the uh the through fellow flames and that really just put too much too many stats on the board for my opponent to deal with here i'm challenging warlock and warlock is a uh, paid warlock right so i know that they want to fight for the board because i know that i'm okay with keeping the spirit of the team because that gives me immediate attack on the turn. So I like that tempo. Obviously, I want a one drop, and I don't have one. So this is not great. But let's see how it plays out. Obviously, but I have no line of play here, but I'm just kind of thinking, what am I going to do in the future? Turns, what can I expect? Is he going to play a Fell Imp on turn one? Is he going to uh, play the Blood Tree? In? Like, what could the turns look like? And I think this is important. You have to kind of plan what you think the game will look like over the course of time. Uh, so here's Party Feed. This great whiteboard for him. So now I have two big decisions here. Do I play Spirit of Team or do I play Sigil Skydiving? And I opted here for Spirit of Team. And are you give, argument can be made for Sigil of Skydiving. Uh, I would just be taking three extra damage from uh, the, the Cell M, or the Flame M. But here you go. And you see my opponent goes really wide. Like he, he took 10 damage right off of that, plus the 313. Like he's at 10 life. So I'm thinking about, do I want to clear the board? And I don't. I don't want to clear the board. I just want to kill him because he has three mana. If he gets four mana, he'll be able to play Infernal and go up to 15. So instead of that, I just want to try to kill him in the next two turns. So I know that I'm going to get three damage from the... Uh, sigil skydiving and i have a charge minion in the hat so and, you know i have multiple ways to kill here and you see me i'm just being a little cheeky and like okay i just let me add let me make him think i top decked it but in that situation it really is just like okay i might i have <clears throat> i went from one turn from where i was fighting for the board to changing and going straight to being aggressive and you need to be able to determine like, when is it right to trade and when is it right to just go to the face and go for lethal? Like, that's the power of this deck is finding lethal over a couple of turns, right? So, here, Adrenaline Feed is never a keep. You don't have enough mana and board presence to to make the effect worthwhile. You want these other ward drops. And we have a very good head here, okay? We have the coin so we can do a double one drop turn one, sigil on turn two, or even the spirit of the team on turn two. Like, we have very, very good lines of play. And there are turns where maybe you don't even play a two-drop on turn two. You can play a one-drop plus hero power, right? But you just got to plan it out. And we're playing versus a mage, so now I know that this is elemental mage, and, you know, I want to fight for the board a little bit, so I'm playing spirit of the team here. I want to keep the board relatively clear uh, so that I can land bigger cards later. You know, and the next turn is either going to be Sigil Skydiving plus one of my one drops, right? So I have to think, you know, which one of these one drops do I want to get the most out of? You know, probably, uh, sorry, probably the, uh, probably the brain masseuse, right? So here we go. We got it clear. Now we have board control and we have three creatures on the board or at least three sources of damage plus the sigil. So another three sources, one damage, right? So this situation is looking pretty good. We're pretty even here, but I'm on a clock because I know in four turns or so, maybe even three turns, my opponent can play Lamp Lighter. He can play the the seven four mage elemental that does a bunch of damage. Like he has options coming up soon, so I need to start being aggressive. Remember this turn we played uh, the sigil, and the sigil did activate 
our parched desperado. So this turns out to be like a great, uh, a great type of uh, secondary effect, right? So here uh, we just kind of think like, is it worth to go to the face? Like, how do we how do we deal with this 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 stage of the game? And I think it is kind of worth it to go to the face. So I'm playing the the, the slither spear because I want my opponent. Like, there are too many threats on the board for him to just, like, efficiently clear out. So, you know, I, he has, like, he has to play around two things. Do I have a lot of ways to buff the Slither Spear? Do I have Hose and Roughhauser and I can buff the 1-1 one -one Pirates? Like, well, what is the lesser of two evils here? And this is very difficult for Elemental Mage to clear because they don't have board clearance. Their board clear is their 7-4 guy, right? So... He, he has to think long and hard about how he wants to play this because he might be just dead here. So he does play the 7-4. Gets what I would say rather unlucky with the hits. And then I just have lethal now. So that's 6, 7, 8, plus another 6. So we get this. Like, you know, there are just many routes to lethal here. Well, actually, uh, I, I needed to activate a, a Arch Desperado one more turn. turn then I didn't have it, but uh, there are many good routes here, so I can play another Sigil, and then Sigil will activate my second Parched Desperado, which will be good. So, you know, I'm just thinking about my line of play, how I'm going to look for trades here. Am I okay with taking uh, four damage to the face on my hero? You know, is it worth it? Can I get killed by Lamplighter? I'm pretty low. So, it is a dangerous situation. You know, Lamplighter plus... Uh, Brewmaster into another Lamplighter. Is it enough? I don't think so. Might not be enough. Maybe he has it. Pretty sure he does it in this game. I don't think I will. It's this one, but we'll see. So. Man, keep in mind, so Parch Desperado is just crazy. Sockbook this, so this spear plus Parch Desperado. Like, it is doubling your damage. Effectively, any damage you find from the hand is doubled. Right, because plus three to my attack means plus three to the Slither Spear as well. So plus six actually means plus twelve, right? And here he's going really wide, and you know, see how they prioritize Hose it? And of course you would, because I have Sigil up, so you know that next turn I'm gonna buff up the uh the pirates, right? But no, here we go, ten damage, fourteen damage out of the head. So that that's the deck in a nutshell. Pretty cool. Um. Yeah.